Okay. For our career series, uh, let's start with uh, an introduction of yourself, your, your name and full title. I am Kabesi Yoba Adeda Yo George Akande, the Lucy of Fusi, or Okay, thank you, sir. C can we just have a brief insight into your background? Well, um, I was born about 60 years ago, precisely 12th of September 1959, and um, I grew up in this town of Shikiti. And I attended uh, St. Joseph Primary School, CKT. From there to St. John's Secondary Modern School. Then I attended Government Tenka College at Duekiti. Um, there, from there, I went to Federal Polytechnic, Bida. And then to Bayou University, Kano. And then Futa in Akure. So I studied electrical engineering. And I did MBA in marketing. And then I worked. Briefly after when I graduated, I worked in a company in Lagos called Kotlahama Nigeria Limited. Um, here I worked as a sales engineer for some years. Um, then I branched out with my, some of my colleagues, we were four. We started our own company, the Castle Nigeria Limited. I mean, Castle Nigeria Limited first, in partnership with my colleagues. And um, we we're doing well, we, we, we are electrical engineers. We are we, we, we handle control, control engineering, and then after some time, 1994, I branched out on my own, my own business. So it's from there that I was invited to come and be the Lucy in 2008. Definitely, you uh, were not born a king. <laughs> How did you get here? Ah, well, I got here by divine, uh, divine direction. Uh, we knew it from when I was a very small boy, little boy, that someday, sometime, I will be the Olusi. I remember something that happened in 1970 when I was about 10 years. Um, my mom is from Ikuti Ikiti. Ikuti Ikiti, just about three, four towns away from here. So yeah, there was a particular day when my grandmother was there at the time. And you know how grandmothers could spoil little children. So I enjoyed the woman's pampering and all the, you know, so I felt we used to go to the holidays. So one of those holidays we went and came back and I, I decided on my own without anybody. I, I took a flight, I was running to Ikuti. So I thought it was just around the corner. So I was running on foot until they caught me on the roadway and brought me back. The lesson there I want to bring out is that when they brought me back to Usi, and between Ayetur and Usi, that's where they got me and brought me back. So they took me to the palace of Kabiesi in Usi at the time, or Badidayo. It should be too. And the man said to me clearly that day, I was 10 years, remember, he said, You cannot live outside this town because you are destined to sit on this throne future. So the man wrote a letter and gave to my aunt who took me to Ikuti. We didn't know what was in that letter. And the man gave an instruction that when we go to Ikuti, we must take that letter and I to the Kabi Sulukuti and hand me back to the Kabi C. So it was always get to the Kabi C that Kabi C told my aunt that the Kabi C which Lushi said this boy is the future of Lushi. He cannot live outside Lushi. And that they gave me three weeks to spend with my grandmother, I must be returned back to you see. That uh, like he said, he said it, Mutifa my So I was deported from put it back to Ushi. So and all along, all my journeys, all my ways, I knew it was going to happen. But it's something I didn't desire at all. I didn't I didn't I didn't want it to be because of various reasons. One of them being that um, I know the work is enormous. I know it's quite tasking. I know uh, it is in conflict with my faith as a Christian. I know as an engineering person, my business is not in the kitty. Engineers don't have anything to do here. 
you know, my own kind of calling. I'm an electrical engineer, you know, so we don't have much to do here. Ikiti, it's only government that patronizes people. So I knew that it's going to be a lot of a challenge for me. So I never wanted it. So I, I remember that I raised the prayer team in my church in Lagos, 1997. When I knew that when it was very strong that this is going to happen, I raised the prayer team. We went to camp. We stayed in camp. We prayed. That should never happen. But alas, it happened. So I'm here. So, so what date exactly? 22nd of January 2008. And uh, when did you meet Christ? You are, you are a Christian? 1987. Uh, okay. Let me put this question to you, Tabis. Mm -hmm. We have born again Christians. Yeah. We have people who believe in tradition. Okay. And some will want to ask, where is the meeting point? There's, the there's no meeting point. There are two different things, darkness and light. And no, no, have you seen meeting point between darkness and light? So what, what's your business in a traditional sense? My business, myself. As a Christian? Who told you that the throne is, uh, is, uh, is revealed to the devil? Well, the believer of the society, that's, not, that's the, society. not the devil, but tradition and... Tradition, and you that. see, this is where the errors are. This is where people make a lot of mistakes. The tradition of the Yoruba Ipo is not adult worship. It's not our tradition. It's a religion to some people. Do you understand me? People misconstrue these things. Uh, the, the, the Yoruba people, we are not, we are not given to our adult worshiping that this is our, our, our tradition. It's not a tradition. Tradition is that the way I dress is tradition. The, the way you greeted me when I was coming in is tradition. My name, Adidayo, is tradition. Sacrifices to the gods. Yes. Those, ones are, those ones are now religion. It's religion. You have to put, you have to put a line between the two. The, 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 you see, the culture, tradition and culture. If I go from here to Adwekiti to go and say I want to ask a girl's hand in marriage for my son, when I get to Ado, they don't need to tell me that Edobale. They don't need to tell me that Kadosita Konshile Kufuakawole. They don't need to tell me all those things because those ones are traditional Yoruba culture. Okay? If I if I if I want to greet, if is any any boy meet me on the road, he want to greet me with my age and my title, he will prostrate. Either, either in a lorry or Kogi or um, Akure, anywhere. But when we talk about this thing you people refer to as tradition, which idol worshipping or maybe their religion. Some people worship Ogun. Not all Yorubas are worshipping Ogun now. Not all. It's a section of people that are worshipping Ogun. In this town now, some people, some Ebi in this town worship Ogun. Not everybody. Some people maybe go for uh, any other Uru. So anything that, anything that does not combine all of us together, how, how did it become a tradition? But over time, Kavis, when, when, when you look at uh, towns and traditional lands, mm. when you read, uh, it's the common place that you have some uh, cultural festivals, which some people will tag as fetish. And the coronation process itself, some people raise question marks. So how did you maneuver? I was very lucky. My, my coronation process did not involve any tradition. What you what you call adult worshiping? You rejected it, or I was even I was going with my people. I've been issue. I'm a Christian. I was a pastor for crying out loud. And I told them because I didn't ask for this, they came to call me. I will not sacrifice my salvation for any office, never. I didn't want it, so they came to call me. I came and we discussed. There's no way I'm going to sacrifice my salvation, and <laughs> what I know is waiting for me in heaven for. This one, it's not possible. So it didn't. I, I did not involve anything. I didn't do anything. Even if I did, some people did, right? And they not talk, They became Christians. I, 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 I was a Christian before I came. But some people came where they were not Christians to be others. But later they realized, so they backtracked. So and the Bible says that all things have passed away. Even if, if, even if I did, even if they did. And they now realize that they made an error and they turn back to Christ. And then, so everything they've done is, is, uh, is, is put in the dustbin. And then they now have to lead a new life. What you do from now going is the issue. But I don't like people to put a tag on us to say that once you're a Christian, once you're a robber or a traditional tattoo holder, 
you are destined to go to hell or you are you are you have to sacrifice to idols no 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 well, definitely since you've been here yeah there must have been pressure from maybe of course monarchs of, friends of and people in the of course yes so how did you there will be but you tell them you tell them you're not doing it you see the thing is this uh whoever it depends on your disposition to this office your disposition if your disposition is such that you see it as so important that you cannot leave it the people can um, twist you to do evil but if you have the kind of disposition i have that if you stop me too much i'll leave this i'm going to do my work then you cannot force me to do anything i would rather leave this place go back to my office and do my job and serve my god than stay here and go to hell going to hell is not an option that's just it you see the bible says anything that can take you to that place drop it say if one of your eyes is going to disturb you remove it it's not an option it's not on the card at all i'm not going to go to everlasting fire because i want to serve the town for crying out loud what do i stand to gain from it I'm not going to do that so, so what has changed since you became the monarchy yeah there, there was never a crusade in this town organized by any other since before i came which i'm doing now since i came i've got a seven, seven days crusade every january commemoration of my coronation right and uh, no lucy has ever preached the bible on the altar before which i'm doing okay and uh, i have not done so many things that i've been doing i believe in god honestly and i believe that see the fact of the matter is that we arrogate the power of god to ourselves arrogate the power of god to idols arrogate the power of god to fetish things that we cannot see god is the god over all so I'm not afraid that anything is going to happen in the town because I didn't create this town. I'm Olushi. It's a title. But I cannot pretend to say Muda Olushi Sile. Are you with me? I will be foolish to think that I hold this town. How can I hold this town when I can't hold myself? So you return the everything back to the owner. And I'm just a manager here. So how has been the role of your wife in the royal journey? Are you on the same page? Of course, yes. Of course. Two cannot work together. They don't agree. She agrees with me. We are together. You cannot talk to the other people. We are both Christians before we came. You see, the fact of the matter is that what do you stand to gain? You, sa- I look at people that are serving adults because they are robbers. In that town, you say you are serving adults because you don't want the town to run into trouble. In that same town, some people are reverend fathers, some people are pastors. So they are going to heaven. You not sacrifice your own life for them. What do you stand to gain? When the same people that you are doing it for are serving that God, you not say because you don't want them to suffer in the town. You are now going to hell for them. And if you die tomorrow, the poor are there, they forget about you. What is your gain? Why should you must, must you go to hell? Because you are a number. Why should you? Me, I don't understand the thing. So personally, I'm not cut out to go to hell. And I will never be there. I bet my ten fingers I won't go to hell. So okay. well, coming to the national uh-huh. the traditional rulers have a role in the society yes. and in the polity. What's your assessment of politics, governance, and development in Nigeria? Well, uh, politics, governance, traditional, uh, whatever. There is, there is. Uh, I would not want to. You know, politics is very, it's a very sensitive thing in Nigeria. Politics is something that whatever you say, they may twist it. They may misconstrue it, they may give a correlation. And I want to say that politics in Nigeria is uh, maybe you are still learning. Maybe you are still learning because we haven't gotten to the level that we should get to. Things are still not the way they should be. Uh, we still have a lot of the electoral process has not been has not been uh, fully perfected. Uh, People that have been thrown up into offices to hold offices, traditional I mean, political offices, they, 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 are still, they are still being handpicked by privileged few. You know, so to that extent, we are not, uh, we have not gotten it properly done. But I, I think we'll get there because at least improving from time to time. And uh, the, 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 the only thing I probably feel about the government we have is that it's very expensive. 
because the kind of government you are operating in Nigeria is extremely expensive. And uh, I just wonder if, as time goes on, we have any money left to the good players in this country when we take out the cost of conducting the elections, the cost of having all these reruns, the cost of this, all these court processes that is in Nigeria that you said in Nigeria that I would say uh, court processes going on for four years of a government but under election court is still they said this was really yesterday now they did this one in last, last Friday on the under election we come we, do, I, we travel everywhere in the world I don't think any country in the world do it the way we are doing it that every moment with every, every time T moment M there's a case in the court election case after elections people should come together put the country in focus work for the purpose of the country but in Nigeria, the governor is not allowed to walk. The guy that lost election to the governor will attack him until the man finishes four years. He can't concentrate. The same thing. The, the opposition is, is bitter opposition. And uh, the litigations, even the governor remembers, I have litigation something against me in court. He can't concentrate. You know, so, and it's expensive. I think maybe we'll get it right someday. But if we continue like this, it's dangerous for us. In, in getting it right, do you also think as we're having Christians like you in the traditional arena, should they go into politics? Traditional lawyers are not allowed to go into politics. No, I said as we are, we are having Christians are, who yes. are traditional Oh, yeah, okay. Also encourage Christians to go to debt very, politics. Very well. You see, good. Thank you for that question. You know, we left, no, Christians left the scene for traditional, for uh, other worshippers. To usurp the throne of being others. The same way they left politics for some people, they are ah, it's a dirty game. But dirty game or not dirty game. This guy will get there, they will make all the laws for us. They set the rules for us. The only problem is that how do you as a Christian contest in a in a in a in, a, in an election that you have to pay people to vote for you? The Christian teaching does not allow that. How do you as a Christian contest in a system where before you can be thrown up by the party as their candidate, a lot of things will have happened. How do you it's a big thing, it's a, it's a serious matter, but if I could become a KBSC without going through all those processes, if God has somebody to be, he can equally be a politician without a politician without actually going through. But I would say that if Christians can be there, it will be very nice. Christian, real Christians, I mean, and uh, such a Christian. Getting there is one thing. Making up his mind to do the will of God is another thing. The Bible says to us clearly, He said we should not join the multitude to do evil. So when you get there, when he gets there, they will untwist him. The Senate or whoever, or if you are the president, the Senate can say this is what we want. We don't want it. They begin to do a lot of things against you. You must be a person that is ready to leave if it comes to that. There's nothing wrong with the president saying, you guys, I can't take what you are asking me to take. I want to leave. Honorably. You can't leave, but how many people want to do that? You would rather compromise and join them. So that's where the issue is. Can be in your life's journey. What day or moment would you say is the happiest? And one on the other side. Happiest? Happiest day of my life? <sighs> do I know? Um, I I don't, I don't think I have any day that is quite superlative in a way for me that maybe this day was, maybe with the day I had my son, my first son, maybe I was, I think I was very happy that I had a son that day, you know, but beyond that, I don't think I have any special day as such. Saturday, no, I don't see any Saturday. Nice that's Saturday. Every day is fine for me. Well, maybe the day that my mother died, yeah, okay, that day I was very unhappy because I came to she. I saw the woman on a Friday. Um, I came on a Friday with my two children at the time. We saw her, she cooked for us, we played around and everything. And I left on a Sunday morning. She opened the gate for me, I drove out. And I remember as I drove out of the compound, I watched the mirror. I saw her standing at the back, holding the gate and looking at me. Then I turned back. 
So what is what is the matter? I said no problem, no problem. Said, good. Only for them to come to Lagos. If there was no fall like this, come to Lagos and call me Wednesday. I shall die it. between Sunday and Wednesday. She was dead. So it really pained me. It was quite painful. So maybe that occasion, yes. But otherwise, every day has been not too not too happy. Not too not not sad either. Just normal. You are a global man. How do you enjoy yourself in this village? Ah, uh, big question. It's tough. It's tough because uh, I'm lucky that I came when technology has gone advanced. I came when phones are working. I came when internet are working. I came when I could get my DSTV working. So I can still link up with people. So I'm fine. From monarchs who are Christians. Yes. yes. There, are, there are questions of how. Uh, culture and tradition uh, seem to have a clash. For instance, some monarchs believe the tradition that says I wear my cap in the presence of the Lord, I don't subscribe to that. Some believe all those loyalties and all that before God will set them aside. Uh, why don't you think that uh, is rubbish in tradition or are you in that school of It's not rubbish in tradition. It's, uh, it's, a, pers- it's, a, it's a personal thing. You see, you behave in the house of God at the level God has revealed itself to you. You understand me now? You pass an encounter with God. What has removing your cup in the church got to do with you? Uh, God said, the Bible says, that every man should remove his cup when he wants to pray. So when you become a monarch, you're no longer a man. Are you not, are you not a man anymore? <sighs> so what are we talking about? This is far people. This is a far priest that gave the monarchs that law that they should not remove their cap. When they want to, they, they, when they want to do their oracle, they all remove their cap. Do you understand me? So if they do that to the ifa, what do you tell the cap is not to remove his cap for his own god? So these things are these things are simple, simple things that if you look at it very carefully, they are the one that gave this thing to the oba that they not remove his cap. When they serve his own God, but where they want to do their own effort, they remove their cap. So just tell me, how do you reverence your God, removing your cap, and then you and you do as you now ban me not to reverence my own God, remove my cap, as God has told me told me to do in the scripture. Um, Randy, now, what, what, what what's your advice to Christians at a time like this all over the world? Christians today. Uh, it is a it's a tough time that Christians are facing now because the the, what, the things that are working against Christians are so many. Particularly, you know, I used to say to people, I said, Nigeria is a country where people are programmed to go to hell. I'm sorry to say, but that is truth. To be a Christian in Nigeria, true Christian in Nigeria is tough. Else you are in the world, go to England, go to US. All the, is to be a Christian in those places are very easy because they live a life of a Christian. They don't have to be a Christian to live as a Christian. Nobody wants to shit you. Nobody wants you to bribe for you anything. Nobody wants you to give money for your child and get admission. Nobody wants you to give him something for your child and get a job. Nobody wants you to lobby anybody. You know? So, to that extent, it is easier to go to be a Christian in those countries. But in Nigeria, we have elevated nepotism, bribery, um, influencing decisions to out of uh, you know to the level and our way of life. I'll give an example. You want to look for a job, you come to meet me, KBC, uh, you want to apply for at FMC or to apply for at Kitty Staking. Who do you know? Give me a note. Give me somebody a note to go and upstage others is a sin. Because the Bible does not allow it. it there should be a, play, a, a level playing ground for everybody. Now, if you don't do it, you say the cabbage does not like his people. But it's actually wrong. You understand me now? Because people should be given a level playing field. But here is the other of the day, Taloma, who will give you a note. It's normal. We don't see that's anything. So that's what I'm saying that we are programmed here to do those things. You want to go, go for an interview? Who do you know? Uh, can help you. you tell him the man take you you came taught he 
put you above somebody that came from a career that is first. It's a sin, but it's our way of life. So, conclusively, to go to heaven in, in Nigeria, we need just grace of God. Because you are living a life that tends and faces hell. Okay, well, Kabe, I see you've been a delight to uh, interact with, and uh, we want to really uh, appreciate the time you've given us. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And we pray that uh, long may you reign on the throne and that you make heaven at the end. Amen. And you too, I pray in Jesus' name. to you this day but you will use me as your vessel to bless your people i request oh lord that i will disappear that you may appear i will reduce that you may increase i pray i will take charge and reign in this program and so shall it be so our theme for this year's program is one thing thou lackest. One thing thou lackest. And the topic I want to bring out of it today is titled My People Perish because of lack of knowledge. We saw how this heaven Conscious man went to the Lord Jesus to ask for how much he can do to make sure that he does not miss heaven. He has fulfilled all the elementary laws in the Bible. Jesus told him, You have read the Bible, you know the Ten Commandments, do not steal, do not do this, respect your mother and father, do not backbite. All these things, have you done them? And the man looked at Jesus boldly and said to him, All these things I have done. What a very bold person. We have treated it very well. And I am not ready to repeat them anymore now. And Jesus now looked at the man. Jesus loved him. That this man has passed the kindergarten stage. That he is supposed to go to the next level. That this man I'm looking at, he has done what he should do in the kindergarten level, I, 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 I pity him, because he has no treasure in heaven, this man was lacking something, 
Jesus saw it in him. Yes, he told him and he said, oh, we can, we, You lack one thing. Oh, go and sell all that you have. Now, tam, go, 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 that you may have treasure in heaven. Oh, in other words, the man lacked treasure in heaven. Oh, he lacked treasure in heaven. Oh, Even though he was working so hard oh, in this part of the world, in heaven he has no record. He didn't have anything to show for his work because there was no record. He didn't do what he supposed to do. There was a man that held so tight to his wealth. In all the things that a man may lack, a man may lack, a, a, a man may lack money. You may lack education. You may lack so many things. But one of the things that the man cannot lack and survive. It's knowledge. When you don't have knowledge, then you are a fool. When you don't have knowledge, then you are stupid. When you don't have knowledge, then you are worthless. When you have knowledge in parts, and you don't have it into detail, you will miss the mark.